having fun. You think this is a party? Most horror fans, if not most people, have heard about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's one of those franchises like Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street. Whether you've seen it or not, you probably know something about it. Whether it be the killer who wears faces, or the guy who butchers people with a chainsaw. Stop. The Texas Chainsaw franchise, though others such as Friday the 13th are arguably more popular, has seen a lot of attempts at remakes or sequels. And a lot of them, in my opinion, are pretty bad. And here's what I think they got wrong almost every time. You watch these movies for Leatherface, the giant guy with the skin mask and a chainsaw. Although in the 1974 movie, along with Part 2, Leatherface is only one of three main antagonists. He may have more of a focus for Part 2, but he's definitely not the main baddie. Throughout these first two movies, you see his brothers Drayton, Ebbins, and Chop Top play more vile parts, and often are shown bossing Leatherface around. However, Leatherface is depicted as a mentally handicapped or retarded child. He does what he's told, and he's arguably more of a victim than an antagonist. He only kills because that's all he knows. To him, this is normal. In part 2, whereas Drayton and Chop Top wanted to kill Stretch, Leatherface was shown as being attracted to her, and not in a sick way either. He seemed more like a child trying to interact with her first crush, and I don't think it's hard to believe that if Drayton and Chop Top were interested, they would have just raped her. Leatherface didn't want to hurt her because he cared, and only went after her the few times he did because he was ordered to, and didn't want to disobey his family and face the consequences of doing so. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Idiot. Thankfully, Leatherface dies in part two. I say thankfully because that means the original timeline will forever be good. The rest of the franchise either retcons part two or is a remake. For example, the light brace Leatherface wears in part three, that's not because of the explosion in part two. That's because he dropped the chainsaw on himself in the first movie. Besides, in the original timeline, part two has never been canon in any of the sequels or remakes. From part three all the way up to the 2017 film, Leatherface has been a bloodthirsty antagonist. With the exception of the 2013 film, which is understandable why he'd be more angry, because just like the sheriff says, the last time a girl got away, he lost his whole family. And towards the end when he discovers Heather's related to him, that's when you start seeing that family bond and his more innocent side, if you can call it innocent. However, other than that one example, the rest of the movies aside from the original timeline, Leatherface is just a bloodthirsty killer. Look at this image from the 74 film, and this one from the 2003 remake, or this one from the 2013 remake. I think you can tell what they're going for. Original, supposed to be scary, not supposed to be generic horror villain. The remake, however, is just pure horror antagonist. In the 2003 and 6 films, they did focus more on family, especially on Sheriff Hoyt, who I really enjoyed. But unfortunately, they ditched the idea of Leatherface being mentally challenged, or at least didn't go very far with it, and went as far as to not only make him a real slasher, but have the ability to teleport. Obviously, he didn't have supernatural powers, but the fact that he magically goes from the basement to down the road, or trapped in a building to the back seat of a car, really made me mad. Not only did they remake our favorite skin-wearing sicko horribly, but they made him a super generic, I'm a killer and a slasher movie killer. In my opinion, the first two movies are great because of what they made you feel. My first time watching the 74 film, I hated Drayton and Nubbins, but I did feel a little bad for Leatherface. For part two, I was more comfortable with the family because overall, I did enjoy my viewing experience. But I still saw Leatherface for who he was and a cold-blooded self-aware murderer, he is not. The rest of the franchise, however, only seem to want to portray him as a slasher and not as a real character. I don't care about Leatherfaces beyond the original, the 2013 one was acceptable, and I'm not saying that because the other Leatherfaces aren't carbon copies of the original, but because they have no character of their own, besides being generic horror movie killer. Feel free to post your thoughts down below. Did you agree, disagree? I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you for watching, I'll catch you next time.